In this lecture, we are going to use a service class to make an HTTP request to the server. So far, we are making HTTP request from our component class. And there is nothing wrong with that. But it's a good practice to make HTTP requests from a service class and then use that service in the component class. The code which we have written so far is not bad and it is doing its job. And if our application is as simple as we have here, then it would be fine. But in bigger applications, we can have a lot of HTTP requests and it will make the component grow with lots and lots of code. And we have also learned that in the component, we should only write those codes which is related to user interface. And the code for dealing with the data should be moved to service class. And that's what we are going to do here. So in this app folder, I'm going to create a new folder and let's call this folder maybe service. Inside this service folder, let's go ahead and let's create a new service file. Let's call it products.service.ts. Inside this file, let's go ahead and let's create and export a class. Let's call this class product service. Now we have learned that when we create a service, in order to use that service, we need to provide it. And we usually provide it in the app modules. So inside this providers array. And when we provide it here, in that case, that service is available for all the components and all the directives in the Angular application. So either we can provide this product service here in this app modules, or what we can also do is we can decorate this product service with at injectable. Okay, and to use this at injectable, we need to import it from angular slash co. And to this at injectable, we can pass an object. And here we can use a property called provided in. And to this, we can assign this root. And it is similar to providing a service in the app module. All right, now inside this service, we are going to create some methods. So let's say we are going to create a create product method. Let's also provide a comment. In the same way, we are going to create fetch product. Again, let's provide a comment here. And let's also create a method for deleting product. And let's provide a comment here. Let's also create delete all products. Okay. Now let's go to our app component class. And from here, let's copy this logic to create a product in the database. So I will cut it from here and I will paste it inside this create products method. Now here, first of all, we need an instance of HTTP client here. So Let's go ahead and let's create a constructor. And here, let's create a private property. Let's call it HTTP, which is going to be of type HTTP client. And in order to use this HTTP client, we also need to import it from angular slash common slash HTTP. Then we also want to use this HTTP headers. So we also need to import it from this angular slash common slash HTTP. And then we need this product. So here we have this products here. So let's copy this and let's pass it here. Okay. Now let's go ahead and let's use this method in our component class. So for that, we need an instance of this product service in this app component. So here, Let's again create a private property. Let's call it product service, which is going to be of type product service. Now let's use this product service instance. So here inside this on product create, let's say this dot product service dot create product. And to this product, Let's pass this products object. Let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. And here, let's try to create a new product. Let's say Samsung 
and let's click on this add product button so currently if you notice in this database we have one product now if i click on this add product button and if i go to the database now you can see we have two products so this samsung product has been added here in the database so this add product button is still working properly that means this create product method of this product service is working as expected all right now let's also go ahead and get the logic of fetching the product so from here and let's go ahead and let's paste it inside this fetch product method now of course here we don't have this is fetching property or this all products property right so let me cut it from here or let's remove it from here and let's also remove this from here now here what we are going to do is this get method is going to return an observable and here we are subscribing to that observable now instead of subscribing it here let me remove it from here what we are going to do is we are going to return the observable which this get method is returning and then we can subscribe to that observable in our app component class but before that let's resolve the issues here so here we are using this map operator now to use this map operator we need to import it from rxjs slash operators so i will cut it from here and let's use it in this service class in the same way in order to use this products class we need to import it so let me copy it from here and let's paste it here and here we need to change the path so here what we need to do is we need to move one folder up there we have this model folder and in that model folder we have this products file okay now remember that from this fetch product method we are returning an observable the observable which this get method will return okay so let's go to our app component class and here we have this fetch products so again let's access this product service and on that let's call this fetch product and this fetch product is going to return an observable let's go ahead and let's subscribe to it and to this subscribe method let's pass a callback function and inside this callback function let's set this all products to the response which we will receive so let's call that response products and we will receive that response in this callback function so let's call it products okay so we are assigning the response which we are receiving the transformed data to this all products array and before this let's also set this dot is fetching to true okay and after all the products are fetched let's set this dot is fetching to false with this let's save the changes let's go to the web page and now you can see here it has already fetched those two products let me click on this fetch product again and you will notice that those two products have been fetched here let's go ahead and let's add a new product okay so a new product will be added in the database as you can see here now let's click on this fetch product button so that third product is also fetched from the database let's go back to vs code and here we have a method for deleting a single product so let's copy this logic from here let's go to our service class and let's paste this logic inside this method okay in the same way and for this method let's also say we are going to receive the id of type string in the same way let's copy this logic for deleting all the products and let's paste it inside this delete all product method okay now in the app component let's 
use the instance of product service and here let's call delete product and to this let's pass this id in the same way here let's again use the product service and here let's call delete all product now here we don't need to subscribe to them because we are already subscribing it here in the service class as you can see let's save the changes let's go to the web page and let's try to delete one product so let's delete this first product let's go to the database and here you will notice that now we only have two products so if we fetch the products from the database it will only show two products in the same way if i click on this clear product button it should delete all the products in the database so you can see all the products have been deleted so if i do fetch product it should display no products available because in the database now we don't have any products okay so in this lecture we move the logic of working with data from the component class to the service class and then we are using that service in our component class now here we no more need this http client so let's remove it from here and let's also remove that import okay this is also not required this is all from this lecture if you have any questions then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day